My philosophy of life is dead straight. Whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. If I didn't believe that, I would have passed the dice a long time ago. And after some of the numbers I've played, I must be a born-again crapshooter. I'm in pretty good shape for a guy who drinks too much and smokes a couple of decks a day. And I'm still a smooth stick man, even if my wife is usually in the driver's seat. But at my age, that's okay by me. I'm a writer. Detective fiction is my line. You've probably spun a few dime store pulp racks with my name buried away in the back. Richard Foster. For a long time, that moniker barely paid the rent. Then one day, my hero, Johnny Magnum, clicked with John Q. Public, and I had a bestseller on my hands. Even an offer from Hollywoodland. But I don't want to tell you about my financial success. What's money anyway, except paper with germs on it? I want to tell you about something else. Something that still haunts me like a nightmare. Something so bizarre and blood-curdling, you'd want to pretend that it never really happened. It began in the autumn of 1966. I was a million miles from that place. But the fate set in motion that morning was headed straight on a collision course with me. It was the home of Victor and Pearl Tosk, a pair of factory-sealed suburbanites. They led a regular sort of life with lots of polyester and very little sex. They had two daughters, 11-year-old Victoria and Sarah, who was 10. Victor was the kind of guy you'd call an endangered species. All heart, but no chest cavity to put it in. Pearl was a two-fisted housewife and a devoted mother. On the morning of their 11th anniversary, they thought they had a pretty good life. Sleeping Beauty, it's Saturday. You get to spend the whole day with the man you love. Do I deserve such joy? Oh, come on, dear. Don't you know what day this is? This is my day to sleep in. Uh, my God. Uh, is it really 11 years already? Not a day less, dear. Happy anniversary, dear. That's my girl. Happy anniversary, darling. Mm. I couldn't have had 11 half your years if I planned them myself. The best laid plans, Victor. Promise me something? Promise me we'll have 50 more. No, 100. I can hardly wait. Come oh. in. Happy anniversary, Mommy and Daddy. I made this just oh. for you. Oh, oh, look at this. Isn't Thank that you, I hope you like it. Pancakes. That's nice. Ooh, hot coffee. Mmm, mm, yummy. Read the card I made you. To my mommy and daddy, I love you more than God, your loving daughter. Oh, that's beautiful, <laughs> sweetie. Thank you. Better eat pancakes before they get cold. Mmm. 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 Good. After breakfast, we'll all go up to Grandma's and get your sister, okay? Uh, do we have to? No, sweetie. It's a very special day. And we want everyone mm -hmm. from the family, everyone to be there. So you have to come, okay? Okay. Okay. Daddy? Mm-hmm? When you die and go see God, will you come back and tell me what he looks like? Sure I will. Promise me? Mm-hmm. Yes, we promise, dear. So, Pumpkin, you come on up. And snuggle up beside dear old dad and tell me what you want to do today. What is it? Well, 
What does he look like? Can he see me? Little Sarah Tost became a ward of the state and spent the next 15 years in a big, sprawling place by the lake. She had a room with a view and the full treatment. To call the Lakeview Asylum a snake pit was like giving it five stars in the Michelin Guide. Sarah was now 25 years old, and like most little girls of 25, she was ready to leave home. Her sister Victoria was now her legal guardian and the only one authorized to sign Sarah's release papers. But Victoria had some plans of her own. No, I won't do it. I don't care about your medical conclusions, doctor. Vicky, try to be disinterested, just for a while, okay? Forget we're discussing your sister. Try to remember that a human mind is just as susceptible to a disease as is the body. <laughs> you can't punish someone for having a common cold, can you? <laughs> You're not making this very easy for me, you know. You want one? No, thank you. Well, I'm listening. Well, then, the courts ruled more than once that your sister committed murder under the influence of a highly diseased mind. That's why she was sent here, Vicky, not to prison. Here to be cured, not to be punished. People are released from Lakeview when they're healthy again. My sister's not healthy again, doctor. I didn't say she was completely cured. I said she was well on the road to recovery. She'll be ready for release within two years, tops. Dr. Hippocampus, I want you to understand something. I hate my sister. I know you've tried to help me overcome it, but it's impossible. I know she can't be put in prison for killing my parents. But I can see to it that she never gets outside these walls. I want her to die here. I want her to rot here. <laughs> I'm never going to sign those release papers, doctor. There's something you should know in that case. Lakeview is practically medieval by today's standards. I wish you to be close in a year's time. If you persist in keeping Sarah a prisoner of her own mind, then she'll have to be transferred to another facility. Or, or a much more expensive one. Money is no concern. I'll spend my last dime if I have to. Just remember this. Sarah's not the only one who'll suffer. Thanks for the pep talk, Doc. I always did enjoy a good bedside manner. So if the asylum is to be closed, I won't have to deal with you again. 
Correct. Victoria, you won't have to deal with me again. Correct. Good. I like happy endings. But you'll still have to deal with your sister again. Goodbye. Doctor. <laughs> I didn't know her then, who she was or what made her tick, but in some strange way, Victoria had already brought me closer to Lakeview. A few years later, she came to work for me as a cook, and it was my wife, Diane, who first noticed something odd about Victoria. Nothing you could put your finger on, but the sickly sense that death tracked this girl like a bloodhound. When she left the asylum that day, Victoria never intended to see Sarah again. But the past has a way of reaching out to settle all bad debts. I'm leaving now. For Christ's sake, wake up! <coughs> oh, God. It's late, and besides, your session is over with for tonight, and I do charge a stiff overtime. Oh, Mama, how am I progressing? Noticeably. Perhaps next week we can actually try to get it up. Why don't you gotta kiss me goodbye? No! Don't give in to your transference. It's a meaningless love. Please. That'll be another ten. Oh. You're hurting me! I'm sorry, sorry. Bastard, let me go! You're insane! You're crazy! Yes, yes. Let me go! Please! You're hurting me! Oh, Martin! In my campus? No, you stupid son of a bitch! Well, what do you want? I just got a call from Dr. Wissenschaft. He's handling all my patients. What does he want me for? It's my day off. Well... He said one of them has escaped. What the hell do you mean, escaped? That's what he said. She got out. I think the police are over there now. What happened? She attacked her matron and killed her. The poor woman's throat was torn out. Oh, my God! What do you mean, she attacked? Yes. They said it was Sarah Tosk. <laughs> Phone him back. Uh, uh, tell him I'll be over.
Hello, Dr. Hippocampus. I've come for my last appointment. Now, Aldo! <laughs> One. I hate you. I hate you too. Shut up, I'm gonna get some sleep. Oh, my head feels like it's got menstrual cramps. You have to be so disgusting for sure in the morning. Oh, I am God's name to you and my father. Always have to drink so much every time we go over there. Nobody said you had to try and keep up with it, food, huh? Sod. Wait a minute. Today's something. What's today? Saturday. Oh, something else. Something special. Uh, anniversary. Happy, Happy anniversary. Besides that. I don't know and I don't care. Right? It's one o'clock and I just want to sleep until two. Oh, wait a minute. I remember. You have a lunch date. With a Hollywood producer who <laughs> wants to buy your book. At noon. Ricky, for fuck's sake, Ricky, what the hell's the matter with you? Why do you keep acting like a goddamn child? Yes, Nigel. He's a busy uh huh. Man. Sure. Why you keep him waiting this long? I mean, so he's a busy man. Well, I'm busy too. Well, you're fucking irresponsible. Okay, Nigel, so I was irresponsible. Don't you know what this man can do for you? You have a meeting, instead you get fucking pissed out of your skull Look, again. Nigel, it was a wedding anniversary. My in-laws were having a party. What am I going to do? Pass it up? I don't give Come a on. shit if it was your own funeral. I got a Hollywood producer about to walk Yeah, okay, party. Nigel. You really should sure. this time. Look, you're my agent, right? You're getting 10% out of me? Yeah, Fix right, it up. Yeah. Do something about it. Do something about it. Yeah, sure, Nigel, uh huh? Okay, Nigel. All right. Okay. Fuck you, too, Nigel. Goodbye. Asshole. Nice talk. Ah, I could leave till next summer. <laughs> At least until the dinner party tonight. Shit. What are we having a dinner party for? We have hardly moved in. It's our anniversary. Shouldn't they be taking us out to dinner? Well, that's the usual custom. But you hate going out, so. So, don't be so smug, okay? So what did uh, what did you get me? Never mind. Not even a hint? No. You gonna write today? No, uh, Nigel scheduled the meeting for 3.30, so uh, I'll meet with this Hollywood asshole. Maybe I'll tell him to take a flying fuck at Rodeo Drive. That's Rodeo Drive, dear. Rodeo, Rodeo, whatever. Besides, you've always said your first bestseller should be made into a movie. Well, now you finally have your first bestseller, and they're offering you a movie. A 3D movie. I mean, I don't want my name read by people wearing funny fucking cellophane glasses. It cheapens the whole thing. Dear. I would hardly call Detective Pulp writing for the new elite. Pulp? Besides, they just see your book a little differently than you do. Why do you always have to be so supportive? Why don't you take a shot at me sometime? I'm gonna go take a shower. Okay. Don't forget to shave. You look like hell. Okay, babe, I'm splitting. You seen my keys? Uh, no, uh, no, I haven't. Did you check upstairs in the chest of drawers? Yeah, I did. Weren't there. Can't find anything in this fucking place. Ah, here they are. So, uh, anything you want me to get? We need a bottle of wine. 
We don't need any more scotch. But, babe, our friends like to drink. What if we run out? Three bottles over six guests? I guess you got a point. Oh, have you heard from Victoria? Yeah, she said she's going to have a bath and then be right over. Yeah, what's she making for dinner? Steak tartare. Steak tartare? What the hell is that? Raw meat. Isn't that great? in the tub. Is that you, Mrs. Foster? Hello? Today's the day, Vicky. Who's this place? I got out. We're going to be together. Forever. I'm off. Mrs. Foster, there's something I'd like to ask you. Shoot. Well, there's been a problem, a family problem, and I have to go back home tonight. So I'd like to leave after I serve dinner, if that's okay with you. Sure it is. Is there anything I can do? <sighs> Actually, yes. Could I have my pay before I leave? Ask me something hard. I'll go get it now so I don't forget later. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Foster. It means a lot to me. It's the least I can do. Here it is. I'll be back in about an hour. Thanks. Hello? Hello, who's there? I'm here. Sarah? I hear you still like cooking for people. Does it pay enough to support a crazy sister? What do you want? I want to see you. Talk about old times. You know, girlish things. I've nothing to say to you. Oh, but you do, big sister. We have a lot to discuss. Sarah must have really had the hooks into Victoria, and she was scared. I don't know exactly what she had cooked up, but people do funny things when they're walking the edge of a razor. The way I figure it, loading up on extra jack means pulling out of town in a hurry. Victoria was leaving town all right, but not the way she'd planned on it. Hello? I don't like being cut off when I'm talking. Look, I told you, there's no reason to see each other. What's the matter? Are you scared? If you keep calling me, I'm going to go to the police. I've already been punished for what happened. They can't touch me. Look, I'll tell you what. 
If you don't want to come to me, then I'll come to you, okay? <laughs> See you right over. No, wait. Sarah! Sarah. I'll come to you. Good. And say an hour? That's fine. Where? The Lake View Asada. I'm sure you can remember where that is. See you real soon. Is that you, Sarah? <laughs> Gregoria.
Hello. Sarah. So nice to see you again. You're out of breath. Why don't you sit down? Let me look at you. After all this time. So, what do you think of how I've kept the place? It's awful. Yes, it is, isn't it? I didn't like being locked up here for so long. You may think it looks bad in this condition, but this is the way I've always seen it. A rotting place. A dead place. After all this time, we've not once talked about our parents. Tell me, do you miss them? Sarah, if this is some form of revenge, you have to stop. Don't you see? There's no place for you. I'm the only support you have. You still need help. I know something you know. I still have some memories. There's one that isn't very nice. Do you know which one that is? One that you thought could be locked away in this place forever. <laughs> I had to kill a matron to get out. I had to bite out her neck. Because they wouldn't give me any sharp objects. <sighs> you may think that's crude. I wasn't as subtle as you were. I couldn't get my hands on any rat poison like you did. <sighs> oh, well. What does it matter now? You thought you could get rid of me in this place. But instead, you simply turned me into you. <laughs> Isn't that great? Mrs. Foster. Good. I hate my husband to catch me with the delivery boy. Look out, bitch. Here I come. So what's going on up here? Hi. Hi, babe. How'd it go? Not so bad. I think we're into something good here. Oh, good. So what's happening? How come I don't smell any home cooking? I don't know. Before I went out, Victoria told me she had some kind of family problem and that she wanted to leave early. She was gone when I got back. That's too bad. 
We got people coming over for dinner. We got Decker Wilson. You know how that son of a bitch likes to drink. Oh, yeah. He's murder on an empty stomach. Well, you're not bad in the kitchen. Yeah, but I'm a lot better in bed. Oh, poof. Doesn't mean I'm gonna fuck Decker Wilson just so he can have a good time. Besides, we need some proper cooking, not this steak tartar shit. Oh, don't be such a pig. Besides, it's still early. She'll be here soon. Hey, babe, what's this doing in here? I thought you went to the bank yesterday. No time. No time. That's not good enough, honey. We can't have this loose jack laying oh, around. Oh, God. You're beginning to sound like one of your bloody detective novels. Yeah, well, don't knock it. It's a good living. Yeah, yeah. So who gets the shower first? Well, who do you think? I've been working up a sweat, and I can see you've got a ways to go. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You want a pump for this? Come and get it, hotshot. You ready? Go. Hard work, huh? Pick up the pace, boy. Pick yeah, you can stay with me? Come on. I don't know. You're a strong girl. You bet your ass, boy. Diane and I were just about to go the distance when destiny reared its ugly head to signal the end of the round. I didn't know it at the time, but when I came to the door, I was already in trouble. This was the first time I had laid eyes on Sarah Tosk, and when she spoke her name, the air chilled around her. She told me Victoria was tied up with a family problem and had sent her over to take care of our dinner. I smelled something strange and at first said no thanks. But then my stomach put in its two cents worth. Trouble was, I'd gotten used to eating once in a while. And if this Sarah Dane cooked anything like her sister, then our problems would be solved. It is getting a little late, and um, I really don't want to choke my way through another one of my half-cooked meals. <laughs> oh, you won't be sorry, Mr. Foster. After all, this is your anniversary, and us tasks sure know how to celebrate those. That's good. Come on in. I had my chance. But fate laughed at me as I let it slip through my fingers. This girl had a scent about her, all right. The scent of death. Tony, you look nice, but... Everyone was late as usual, so the party got rolling about an hour off the mark. But so much for time. All it does is pass you by anyway. It all started out quietly enough. A home-cooked meal drinks on the house, and a group of familiar faces we called our closest friends. Yeah, nice, cool. uh, it's about that frozen generation. Anthony Zito was an old chum from my salad days. He uh, boasted a string of unproduced screenplays and just as many one-night stands. He was a silver-tongued hello artist with a wolf's nose for female blood. No, it's like, it's like you know, diner. He'd brought his latest conquest in the shape of a honey-eyed dish named Windy Fields. She wanted to be a movie star, and as far as I could see, the only thing holding her back was her clothing. Just, just... Nice enough, kid, even if she was a bit green around the gills. Whoops. <laughs> Pick it up again. Uh, Imam Wilson was a friend of Diane's, going back to their Marxist days in college. But even a communist has a few bad habits to support, so she went into advertising. Now she was selling philosophy instead of buying it, and that's what I call a good five-year plan. Decker Wilson was Imam's husband, a successful psychologist and the most belligerent bastard I ever met. Our present agreement was that we would never agree on anything, and the result of that was a friendship that suited us both just fine. The evening was almost perfect. Almost. 
Oh, you did have it coming? No, I'd like to. Oh, you like to. Oh, yeah. Look, here it comes now. Oh, yeah. Looks good enough to eat. Oh, good. <laughs> the bathroom is great. Yeah. 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 If you need anything else, I'll be in the kitchen. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Don't they have a stall? That's great. <laughs> Once a year, I have this uncontrollable urge for raw meat. And uh, tonight's the night. Wow, so okay. Thank God it's only once a year. I don't like this. <laughs> okay, so pass it to your place. So where were we? Well, I was just saying, plate, Richie, you know, you have an incredibly nice view kidding. of the human animal. It's a world. Ah, bullshit. Come on, come on. Don't call me Richie, okay? Aw, I give this to man. It's cute. Nice big yeah. <laughs> Something you're missing here, Decker. I don't think you can look at the human mind as a piece of meat that you can just cut up or an engine that you can take to a mechanic to get fixed. Oh, this is wrong. Of course, of course it's an yeah, engine. It's of course, it's mind, mind. It's just some medieval concept like soul. We have to start talking about brain. And all the brain is just a complicated, elaborate machine. Okay, that's it. Garbage. I can't live with that. Look, Thank you. I'm a writer, okay? I write for Green human pepper. beings. I write uh, for the soul. Uh, I don't write for a machine. Richie, darling, it's like a car. It's only as good as its last tune-up. Fine insight, sweetheart. <laughs> okay, uh, why don't we eat? Mine's still moving. Okay, give it a go. Mm -hmm. After you. Oh, Come on! Don't be chicken. It's wonderful. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's not bad. Oh, no. It's like a loser. goddamn writer knows more about the human psyche than a psychologist or a psychiatrist. It's not even a science. It's, what, 150 years old? It's mental masturbation. It's a fucking crap game. Oh, look, look, try and be disinterested for just a second, okay? Not everything in the world revolves around you as a writer, okay? I'm speaking in principle, and in principle, there's no such thing as a mind, okay? It's just a brain powered by chemicals, electrical impulses. It's, it's like, it's like a liver or a gallbladder or a piece of meat, you know? That's all it is. When something goes wrong, it can be fixed by chemicals or surgical procedures. That's all there is to it, man, okay? There's no mystique. I never thought I would hear a psychiatrist say something like this. Well, he fancies himself a bit of a maverick. Well, I'm a, I'm a psychologist, you know, there's a difference. I study the brain. You mean you don't make people lie down and tell you their dreams? No, sorry. That's okay. I like the way he looks at me. It's like he can read my mind. What's the fucking difference? It's all bullshit anyway. Psychologists, psychiatrists, you're all charlatans. You're always toying with our brains. You're trying to turn us into zombies or fucking guinea pigs or something just to justify your experiments. You're taking the magic okay. out of it. Okay, okay, what you're saying is really dumb. Uh, but I can see your point. Yeah. Uh, uh, you're just afraid. Decker, darling. We're all afraid. So, take my latest book, for instance. There's a character. Mm -hmm. He's a psychiatrist, but uh, he's impotent, as most of them are. And the only way he can make love is if she's tied to a barber's chair and she's mute. All right, you know what your problem is? You think people are motivated like the stupid characters you create in your books, right? which I understand are not doing so hot. They're on remainder tables at Brentano's at the moment. Okay. People are motivated by electricity. Right? It begins in the body. It's, it's biological imperative. It's something we have no choice about. But it's not. It's not soul and all this garbage that you keep coming up with so you can sell books and fool people. Uh, keep my books out of it. You're starting to piss me off. Richard, uh, the man is a guest. I'm sorry. He's a pompous asshole. Well, don't apologize yeah. to me. It's Decker you've insulted. Yes, Richie. Please apologize to Decker. Then maybe he'll shut up. Decker, please <laughs> forgive me if I, if I refuse to kneel down to the latest psychiatric fashion. Mm. But you can't put people under a microscope. You can't project their actions on a sign curve. They're more mysterious than that. They do things for reasons that neither you nor all this Freudian bullshit will ever be able to fathom. It's, call it fate. Call it mystery. Call it destiny. No, wait. He makes sense. I had an aunt, Zia Costanza, perfectly normal her whole life. Then years ago, for no apparent reason at all, she invested all her money in the world. Her husband had her committed. <laughs> Tony, be serious. I am. You think I'm always lying to you. Well, what about that part you said was perfect for me, hmm? Oh, well, I want to talk to you about that. Um, I gave it to the producer's ex-girlfriend. Tony, I don't believe it. 
Tonight you're going home alone. Oh, I'll meet you tonight. <laughs> need a lift? I think what she needed. Oh, yeah, huh? take you. Anybody for another drink? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wendy, maybe you better give me a hand with that. Anybody else? <laughs> no. 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 Can I have a smoke, man? No. Sure, just hold on a sec. So, what's the story, big boy? That is rotten. You can't take it. <laughs> what about, all right, what about this guy who went up in the tower and started picking off people with a rifle? What about this guy who went into a burger joint and blew away a bunch of women and children? What about Charles Manson, for Christ's sake? Are you trying to tell me that's a, there's a rational explanation for that? No, man, there's a function for that, a brain function, right? And, and when that goes wrong, that's the stuff that happens. Oh, but that's awful. So many people die, and we don't know why. Well, they're in the wrong place at the wrong time. That's all there is to it. Yeah, that's all you need. Listen, I can't believe it. You're a filmmaker, for Christ's sake. Are you trying to tell me you can agree with this shit? I think what Decker is trying to say is that rational acts are seen by us as irrational. You mean like we want to I see don't. them as unexplainable? Exactly. We like to believe in the irrational. Oh, that's it. Gives us an excuse to remain like children. So we, uh, Richard needs to mystify everything into mind and soul and, and faith and destiny and all that dumb oh, clap Decker, trap. Give us a break. Listen, listen. You know, you know my nephew, remember? Yeah. Jason, six months old, yeah. right? I'm bouncing him on my knee the other day, right? All of a sudden, Kid lets out this incredible monster fart. Uh oh. Okay? His eyes open wide, he stops breathing. And then another second bursts into tears. The kid is terrified of his own fart. To him, it sounds like the end of the world. You know it's just gas. Yeah, it's a big bang for you. Uh, you're so smug, it makes me puke sometimes. No, good. I mean, you should be quiet for a minute. All right, listen. I'm a mystery to myself. You're a mystery to me. We're a mystery to each other, for Christ's sake. But I'm a writer. I'm a human fucking being. I have to try and make some sense out of this. Of course we're irrational. We, we hunt, we, we sleep, we shit, we piss, we fart, we fuck. And then every once in a while we go a little crazy. We, we cross over that line and we have to kill. Maybe we kill hundreds, maybe we kill thousands. But it's not because we're low on chemicals. Can you get that through your thick fucking skull? I'd like to propose a toast. To our host and hostess, who uh, tonight have ended one beautiful year of love and happiness, and are beginning the second of what I'm sure is going to be a whole long series of such years. May they love and prosper and bear many sons and daughters, all of whom someday, as in the primal myth, will rise up and slay their dad with a big mouth. To Richard and Diane, with all our love, salut. Thank you, Derek. Cheers. 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 Let's see it. <laughs> so, Okay, I, I know I'm gonna be home early because I have a bit of a headache. And this part is kind of dying out. Yeah, it was fun. It was okay. We had a nice meal and everything. Okay. So I left you some. Oh, you found it? It was good, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, no, I don't cook like that. It's my mom's. Okay. So I'll see you in about, say, an hour, an hour and a half. Give my sweetheart a kiss. Okay, good night. When I came to, my brain felt like it was carved open by a pack of wild butchers. Whatever she put in that meat hit harder than dirty smack in a cheap junkie's needle. But the pain in my head was nothing compared to the rabid fear that burned through my guts like a blast furnace. What a mess. Kaz 
Ma. I'm busy. I've got a surprise for you. I don't like surprises. You'll like this one. The company has arrived. You got people? Mm -hmm. You got real people? Real people. Are there any girls? Lots. <laughs> oh, I hope they like me. Okay, I get the tub. She promised the tub to me. You promised the first time that we got real people that you'd give me the tub. You promised! <laughs> no, 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 no. You can look, but you can't touch. Now that's better. Now be a good little boy and let me see you smile. Come on now, let me see those pearly whites. You take the chair tonight. Okay, now come on, boys, we've got to get going here. I gotta go put my makeup on and I'll meet you in the playroom in 20 minutes. And clean this mess up. And shut off that awful music. I never liked the second act of this opera anyway. It always made me feel melancholy. Waldo, what are you talking about? Waldo! We got real people, you big jerk. We got real people. <laughs> <laughs> I knew one thing for sure. Beyond that door, life took second place. The nightmare was on the other side, just waiting to swallow me whole. The kind of nightmare from which you never wake up. Or wake up already dead. Sarah Tosk wasn't insane. She was beyond insanity. She left it standing at the gate. Whatever they did to her in this place was buried deep inside her brain like a maggot. And every time it crawled, she crawled along with it. She was running neck and neck with mania. And at any moment, she was going to win. that y'all came down this evening to see me. Are y'all having a real good time? I know we're gonna have a good time. Did y'all enjoy your dinner? Mm -hmm. Wasn't it real nice? Come on now, let's see some fun on those faces. I can't see any of you smiling. Y'all look like you're gonna die or something. Come on now, I wanna hear you say something. Come on, tell me if you're having a good time. Oh, you had a good time? Come on, I want to hear you say yeah!
see before the three stations of the soul the id the ego and the super ego it is also the number of congregants we have in our church as well as the number of roles we will assume in tonight's ceremony so you see each and every one of us will experience the sensual pleasures of the full cycle. The dispassionate eroticism of the voyeur. <laughs> and we also have the impotent thrill of the unit disciple. And as well, we have the godlike power of the executioner. We are ready to begin the ceremony. Now, which one will it be, boys? Let's see. <laughs> I know. Any, meeny, miny, moe. Catch a monkey by the toe. <laughs> if he holds, let him go. Any, meeny, miny, moe. <laughs> You're it, honey. <laughs> It's 
civilized. The only reason we shave is to add yet another difference between man and animal. Because, you see, animals don't shave the hair from their bodies. There's no need to. Only men and women do. And it's awful. Because you never know when you just might I'd like to order a large pizza, please. Anchovies. Yeah, give me everything on it and anchovies. Don't forget the anchovies. Yeah, yeah. Give me uh, three burritos uh, and a fresca and a, and a deck of black cat filters, please. Mm hmm. Uh, Lakeview Asylum for Mental Disease, thirteen thirteen Lakeview Boulevard. Great. Well, I'll, uh, I'll leave a light on for you. 40 minutes? Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. <laughs> Come on, it's your turn. You'd better get out of those clothes. They'll only get... Wet, and then you'll catch your death of cold. Better. <laughs> oh, 
It eases your mind. Don't, don't worry. This won't, won't hurt a bit. It, it'll make you feel better. Shock treatment makes me feel better too. You'll like it. You'll see. You'll like it. You really will. Here, I'll, I'll start off slow at first, so 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 you can ease into it. There. That wasn't so bad. I I I think you'd better turn it up by 50%. She's looking so much better. Turn it up! Anybody order a pizza? You order a pizza? Anchovies. Oh, let me see. Uh, yeah. You bring the brios and the smokes? Yeah, they're right here. Good. How much? Let me see. That's eighteen fifty. Plus. Uh, Plus what? Well, look at this. It um, says here that you're the uh, one hundred customer <coughs> of the day, so there's no charge. <coughs> What was that? Rats. Big fucking rats in this place. Had to kill one the other day. With a shotgun. Rats. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess they'd be big around here. <laughs> you enjoy that pizza, okay? Okay. <laughs> 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 nice try. <laughs> Was your mother a shrew? Were you jealous of your brother? 
Were you a spoiled child? <sighs> come, come, Dr. Wilson. You're a doctor. You know how important it is to cooperate. <laughs> Well then, if you won't let me help you with psychoanalysis, I'm simply going to have to revert to modern methods. <laughs> now, one little bit of this. <laughs> And you're going to feel much, much, much better. <laughs> now, Doctor, still, keep still, Doctor Wilson. Oh, come on, that's a good little boy. Now, Doctor Wilson, you're making this very difficult for me, Doctor Wilson. Doctor Wilson, keep still, Doctor Wilson. Doctor Wilson, Doctor Wilson, keep still. Now, Doctor Wilson. Oh. <laughs> simply is not going to work. Now, I just simply don't know what I'm going to do. Now, that's an idea. Well, there doesn't seem to be anything wrong in there. <laughs> that is good news, isn't it? But just in case, I'm going to write you out a prescription for antidepressants. Now, I'd like you to take one tablet twice daily. At first, you'll feel a little bit groggy, but then you'll feel more alert and alive than you've ever felt. There you go. Well, now, it seems your hour is up. Yeah. See you next week. <laughs> Completed the first cycle. Let us rest before we begin the second. Fred, that's it. Ademi Quando. Quando is yours. Waldo, careful with the knife. You're making me nervous. Ow! Did you hurt yourself, honey? You crazy jerk. Don't leave the thumb on my teeth. What is this? Um, no napkins? What do they think we are? Pigs? <laughs> Who got meat on this pizza? You guys know I can't eat meat. I don't like it. It makes me sick to look at it already. I'm, I'm definitely convinced that you're a pig. Don't eat like that. What are you, what are you doing? <laughs> ah, good pizza. How's the drink? Diet enough for you? <laughs> Don't throw that at me. What are you doing? <laughs> hey, boys, it's getting late. You gotta get going. I'll go get changed. And you boys are finished. I'll meet you at the altar. Don't fuck with me, Tony. Just don't fuck with me. Come on, you fuck with me. You fuck with the best, man. You fuck with the best. To get that scar, Tony. To get that scar in the pussy. How am I gonna get a scar like this in pussy, man? Huh? Come on, how am I gonna how am I gonna do that? Guys, what the fuck are you doing? I got two things in this world, man. I got my balls and my back, and I don't break up for nobody. Al Pacino and Scarface. Okay, I'll try you try. She came at me in sections. More curves than a scenic railway. Fred is there, the great thing. I had a dream. I had a dream about a snail crossing a stray razor and lift.
That's, uh, that's Brando in, uh, Apocalypse Now. No, 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 here, here, here. Come on, no, I want you to have it. No, take, no, thank you, thank you. No, come on, come on, come on. Come on. What? You don't know. I don't okay, know. Okay, I'll try to check on that. Okay, ready? Ready? Uh, that's, uh, that's James Cagney in anything at all. <laughs> huh. Go. There are men and there are women. And sometimes, when they fit together really well, mm -hmm. they go together like <laughs> spoon. <Come on. laughs> Lana Turner, The Naked Jungle. Movies ain't what they used to be, you know that? I should have been an actor. I should have. Welcome back, guys. And thank you for being so very, very, very patient. <laughs> Ooh. We will now conclude with tonight's festivities. <laughs> Let us begin with prayer. These bed bug loonies had nothing left to lose, so they played for the highest stakes. They were trying to beat the devil at his own game, and I couldn't afford another slip up. I had to make my next move with a trump card, and it had to be as cold and clean as a killer's kiss. You're on. <laughs> 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 Faye, how are you? I haven't seen you in a long time. Oh, but your hair looks wild. You haven't been seeing someone else, have you? <laughs> Don't worry, we'll fix that right up. We've got some split ends here. Naughty, naughty girl. <gasps> Such beautiful dogs. <sighs> but they do look so overworked. Have you ever really thought about toes? Now, Dr. Freud has a lot to say about feet. So why don't we start with a pedicure? Hmm? They're lovely. So beautiful. So frail. So pretty. But they're going to have to come out.
take this. Take this. Hold it. That's it. Let's go. Hold it. Wait. Let's move. Let's go. something to wear. See, see if you can find something. Diane, here. Put this on. We gotta get out of here. Where's the knife? Where's the knife? Uh. Take it, take it now, come on. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's go. Uh.
That's my story. Not too pretty, but the straight goods. You can use it if you want to. It'll make a good case history. Or better yet, a story to scare the hell out of your friends after a dinner party. But like I said, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Unless, of course, it kills you. So do yourself a favor. Don't tell anyone you heard this from a dead man. They'll think you're crazy. 